Hello everyone, my name is Jorge Martinez and together with Manuel Sanjurjo we are going to present the results for a critical review on the state of the art of Lambert's problem solvers at the International Conference on Astrodynamics Tools and Techniques. So first things first, what is the Lambert's problem? Well, it is a very popular astrodynamics and orbital mechanics problem originally posed by Johann Heinrich Lambert, which states to find for the orbit connecting two known position vectors over a finite amount of time. The whole problem is modeled under the two-body dynamics assumption. In fact, it is the two-body point boundary value problem of the two-body dynamics because it tries to find for an orbit with a minimum amount of information, the Lambert's problem is usually included within the initial orbit determination subject. However, it has other applications related with interplanetary and intercepting maneuvers, trajectory design and quick mission analysis. During the last decades, the problem has suffered from a revival because of its applications. In fact, we might establish the origin of modern Lambert's routines with the start of the space era. The solution of the problem can be reached by iterating and since the 60s, lots of methods have been proposed to address the problem more efficiently, combining a sound of analytical approach amenable for being implemented in the form of computer algorithms. Given the large amount of approaches, a simple question then raises. Which one of these algorithms performs the best? The process of implementing all device solvers along history would be a very long task. However, the methods can be classified according to the approach taken for solving the problem. Here, we bring a classification according to the free parameter employed, universal variable or eccentricity. The classification tree shows also dependencies between methods within the same family. Our selection of the algorithms is based on previous performance comparisons made by Clamp and Sangra. We also consider those algorithms which have never previously been compared against other solvers. Hence, the selected algorithms were Gooding 1990, Avanzini 2008, Aurora 2013 and ITSO 2015. Gooding 1990 generates from Lancaster 1960 and Clamp's analysis show it to be the most robust and accurate of its days. Some years ago, ITSO introduced a new algorithm based on Lancaster's formulation 2. ITSO 2015 is known to have a high performance and thus we included it within this analysis. For the case of Aurora, this is the latest of its branch and has never been compared against other routines, although Aurora included a brief comparison against Gooding's solver in his article. Finally, a new solution approach was started by Avanzini, exploiting the eccentricity as the free parameter. Because it is the first of its class, it was included within the performance comparison. A common set of elements can be identified in any Lambert's problem solver. These elements are the free parameter, the initial guess, the root solver and finally the way in which the velocity vectors are constructed. The table in this slide shows these elements for each one of the algorithms considered. The free parameter from Gooding's algorithm is a variable related with the universal formulation, being associated with elliptic orbits for values of x below 1, parabolic orbits when x equals 1, and hyperbolic ones when x is greater than 1. For the case of Avanzini's algorithm, the free parameter is one of the two coordinates of the eccentricity vector, named the transverse eccentricity component. The other component, which is parallel to the code of the problem, is constant no matter the geometry. Adoras makes use of a cosine transformation introducing a new universal formulation variable named k. Finally, the variable chi proposed by ITSO also belongs to the universal formulation and it is related to a logarithmic transformation. Regarding the numerical methods employed, three of the four methods make use of a high-order convergence one, that is, Halley's one. 
On the other hand, the radial and tangential velocity contraction approach is used by two of the methods. For the case of Avanzini's algorithm, it originally returned the classical orbital element Z as the final output. However, in order for all algorithms to have the same return values, we decided to apply a conversion between classical orbital elements and position and velocity vectors. All the computations were performed assuming direct transfer acts, for which non-dimensional radius of rho equals 2 was imposed. The absolute and relative tolerance were set to 10 to the minus 5 and 10 to the minus 7 respectively. The performance comparison was done considering the number of iterations, the time per iteration and the total time since the algorithm is called till it outputs the final result. All of the previous metrics were made for a particular combination of transfer angle and non-dimensional time of flight. It is important to say that time measurements might be affected by machine specifications and running processes on it. The programming language is used to implement, uh, which was used to implement all the algorithms with Python. The source code for both the solvers and the comparison performance can be checked using the link to the original repository named Lambert Hub. Let us start by presenting the results with Gooding's algorithms analysis. This algorithm was implemented using the same code provided by Gooding in his article. As claimed by him, the solver does not require more than three iterations. However, it seems to require more time per iteration if the non-dimensional time lies near pi halves. Nevertheless, the overall total time shows it is a robust and accurate solver. The algorithm proposed by Avanzini requires a number of iterations between 4 and 5. Regarding the computation times, those are high if compared to the rest of the solvers. This is a combination of the root finder used by the algorithm and the lack of a procedure for generating the initial guess. The reason why a regular falsy method is used by Avanzini's algorithm is that the derivative of Kepler's equation with respect to the free parameter was not provided in the original report. Nevertheless, it must be said that this algorithm truly unleashes the geometry of the problem by providing a new perspective on how to address it using the eccentricity vector. The routing device by Aurora only requires a maximum of two iterations, showing only a high time per iteration for values of tau below pi halves. One of the main features introduced by Aurora is his algorithm in, in his algorithm is a robust initial guess procedure. Although different regions were introduced using an arbitrary criteria, they result in a lower computation time. In fact, Aurora Solver is faster than Gooding's and Avanzini's one. However, this robust initial guess computation has a cost. Most of the time is devoted to the initial guess computation. Finally, when it comes to ESO's algorithm, it is seen to require a mean of two iterations despite having an increase for the region near tau equals pi halves. The initial guess procedure was based on a linear approximation, being less accurate than Aurora's but faster. All previous facts make this algorithm to require the lowest amount of time to compute a particular solution. With all the results presented, it is time to raise some conclusions about them. The first one is that although a procedure for the initial guess is crucial, it is desirable not to devote so much time for its computation. It is preferred to use high order methods such as Halley or Householder for carrying out the iteration workload. The performance of an algorithm can be estimated considering the total amount of time it requires for solving the problem and the iteration workload. Considering previous points and results, it is possible to identify ITSO's algorithm as the one which performs the best, followed by Aurora, Gooding and Avanzini's solvers. Apart from the analysis carried out by this work, other possible contributions might be the addition of new solvers,
The performance comparison under the multi-revolution scenario, or BIGBU, memory cost and profiling might be also interesting to identify bottlenecks and weak implementation points. In addition, a similar performance comparison can be done for algorithms dealing with the initial value problem, and that is Kepler's problem. Finally, here, here are all the original articles and publication of the implemented solvers. Thank you for your attention and we hope you have enjoyed this presentation.